So the course of schizophrenia over the period of a lifetime, so starting with um, when people are uh, in childhood before the age of 13, in the pre-morbid period, we know that some patients have a genetic risk, a first degree relative or more than one relative with um, psychosis, with schizophrenia. Prenatal infections are known to be something of a risk factor. So you, know, you all know about the winter birth phenomenon, right? In uh, temperate uh, parts of the world, uh, there's a higher rate of schizophrenia among people who were born during the winter. And uh, I'm a December baby myself, so you're not absolutely doomed if you're born in the winter, but there is a higher rate of infections in the newborns when you're born in the winter. And in case you're wondering who here's from Australia, Southern Hemisphere, um, their winter is July, and yes, it does correlate. So it's not like December babies in Australia have a higher risk, it's July babies. Um, hypoxia, um, people who have birth complications, cord wrapped around the neck, that sort of thing, have a higher subsequent risk of developing schizophrenia. And malnutrition, one of the best, uh, what should you call it? It wasn't an experiment because it wasn't done on purpose, but what was really good is that researchers noticed this and then looked for it. During World War II, parts of Holland uh, had famine, parts of it had food restriction, and parts of Holland did not. And then they looked at the records um, you know, 18 years afterwards to see um, who is more likely to develop schizophrenia. And this is possible in a country where they have really good records and people don't tend to move in or out that much. And what they found was that the people in the areas where the moms had restricted food during the war, that there were higher rates of schizophrenia. So functioning can be fine during the pre-morbid period. And then there's this prodromal period where um, Patients might have uh, drop in grades, fewer activities than they did before, fewer friends, but not outright um, psychosis. And during this time, as I said, social withdrawal, academic decline, what we called basic symptoms in that earlier slide. Um, there can be stress during this time, and sometimes family members afterwards will try to figure out if it was correlation or causation. So they'll say, oh, you know, they got cut from the team. And then it's sort of like, well, was this something where the uh, patient was functioning less well and then they were cut from the team? Or family members will be like, yeah, if he wasn't cut from the team, he wouldn't have developed these symptoms later. Um, and then drug use, again, correlation causation thing. Maybe they were starting to develop symptoms, so they sought out relief by using illicit drugs, or it could be the illicit drugs precipitated the psychotic symptoms, or maybe a little bit of both. Then you have the crisis, and this is where we're gonna stop with this talk. First, we're talking about ultra high risk. Later on, we'll talk about first episode. But what I want you to see in this particular graph is that before the first episode of psychosis, there are things that are happening. 